for that. Hello, everyone. Welcome, everyone, to BCTV. Happy Monday. As I always say, I'm happy over, over, every day of the week. So BCTV is something that you uh, guys are familiar with. Most of the speakers over here, we run the shows Monday to Friday. I run it from Singapore, uh, 8 p.m. Um, every day. So we cover different topics every day. Today is the start of the week. On Monday, we're covering entertainment, media, and games, uh, and the investments around it. Um, so today, I have also a very interesting panel uh, from the West and Far East as well. Uh, I have some regular speakers, and I have some new speakers as well. Um, so before I um, start the panel, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Sunny Mohanty. I'm the regional director of La Token, and I'm based here in Singapore. And I host these shows every day, Monday to Friday, and I love doing it <laughs> again and again. So, uh, yeah, uh, today's topic is about gaming industry, entertainment and media, as all of you speakers know. Uh, I would like to start with our new speakers with the introduction. Then I went, once the introductions are done with the questions, I'm going to start moving from the east to the west. Um, so we've got a very interesting panel today, as always. We have John Lee, who has just joined us from the very first time from South Korea. Hi, John, and welcome to VCTV Asia. How are you doing? You are on mute. Hi, Sony and everyone. My name is John Lee. Um, I'm based in South Korea. This is my office, and now I'm working for the Kona Investment, which is, which is one of the venture capital houses in Korea. And my specialty is actually gaming because I was working in the games industry more than seven years. And I beca became the venture capitalist four years ago. Our company is running two funds and the total AUM is more than 40 million US dollars. The sector is no matter what, but we are looking for all these stage, the startups which has nice team member and solid business model to go to the global. Uh, thank you for having me. <laughs> Great, John. Thank you, and welcome to VCTV for the first time. We're going to hear a lot uh, from uh, a lot of insights from you uh, regarding South Korea soon. Thank you so much, and sit tight. <laughs> okay, this is the next speaker we'll, we have, who is all the way from did he say LA? So Tony, Tony Potts. Hi, Tony. Welcome to VCTV Asia. You're on mute. <laughs> so. Thank you for having me. Good morning, everybody. It's a little after 5 a.m. here in Los Angeles. <laughs> uh, but I, am, I am wide awake. By the way, I, I do have your Disney. I can match your Disney, Sunny. I've got my, my daughter's. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, real quick. So um, I've been in media uh, forever. Producer, writer, presenter. I uh, presented a, a pretty big show here in the States called Access Hollywood to about uh, 10 million people per day. Uh, but behind the scenes, I've always been a, uh, an investor uh, also, a person really involved in tech, both in uh, esports way back in the day, uh, from right. 2013, yeah, 2013, and so, uh, and then I, after I uh, left uh, Access Hollywood here in in Hollywood, um, I started investing in uh, small companies, especially on the media side, and then went to uh, Europe and built a couple of small media companies, uh, spun them out in ways for investors, and then went to uh, that was in Amsterdam. And then in Budapest, uh, Hungary, I built an international film company, uh, working in partnerships with both uh, the U.S. ambassador to Hungary and the Hungarian ambassador to the U.S. Uh, and then built that company uh, from scratch, named it the whole nine yards mission statement, and then launched it in about seven weeks after we, we started. And then went around the world to the film festivals, launched there. And uh, so I'm, I'm kind of, I, I have a foot in both worlds, studio world and media world, but also building media companies and then infusing tech uh, into the into the middle of all of that. Uh, wow, Tony. excellent, Tony. I mean, great work. I mean, you know, you're building an ecosystem, actually. And uh, thank you so much, and welcome to VCTV Asia. I hope to see you more on our Asia channel. Like, I'd the, love to. We spend a lot of time in Southeast Asia, so it's my wife's an entrepreneur, so she's in India all the time, and actually South Korea is the next place she's going to launch, so this all works out well. <laughs> Excellent, fabulous, and welcome to VCT again. Great. Uh, uh, like, I'm uh, going to move to Sergey. Hi, Sergey. Welcome back on VCTV. How are you today? Hi. Yeah, everything great. So, I mean, the, uh, probably not as warm as in LA, but uh, <laughs> should be great. 
so um, yeah, my name is Sergey, and I have uh, experience in uh, my background is in telecom, mobile, mobile entertainment, uh, also gaming, banking, and uh, financial expertise. You know the investments and uh, consulting. Uh, side of things and currently I'm a managing partner in uh, Morphosis Capital Partners. We are boutique venture capital and uh, consulting investments company uh, that connects companies across Asia, Europe and US to uh, high net worth individuals that we work with because we do risk management for them. And we do technical audit, all this stuff to minimize risks and help them do the right investments into startups, early stage startups. Yeah, I remember that. You we've yeah. also yeah, offices all over the world. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Sergey, and and welcome back to BC TV. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> all righty. Now I'm not going to miss him today. <laughs> Louis, welcome back to BC TV. Happy Monday. See, my lobby has a different view today. So okay, yeah, because uh, you know I'm shocked. I'm getting I'm getting in before Gary. Oof, look at this. <laughs> No, after Tony though, I gotta I gotta try to follow that. You're going act. up down now, Lewis. You're going up down. <laughs> I know. I'm moving up like George Jefferson. What's going on? You're going up to Manhattan now. <laughs> there we go. There we go. <laughs> All right. Just to give you guys a skinny, I've been involved in finance for over a quarter century. Involved in technology longer than that. We're involved. I'm a managing partner with FJA Partners. We're involved in artificial intelligence, AR, VR and blockchain and we have a lot of great things going on with our platforms like Documega, Vero Hive, which is a video collaboration platform, Documega, which is a, a document um, management system that's blockchain enabled. So we have a lot of things going on there. I'm interested to hear what, what Tony has to say about the entertainment industry because I think that right now everything's pivoting to uh, to a new a, a new world that we're going to be living in and with Netflix and other companies on the streaming services that are blowing up that the entertainment industry is changing. It's changing dramatically. You got AMC, you got other, other theater chains that are shutting down. It's, it's just a, a, an inflection point and it's going to be very interesting to see how things work out. And esports are a big thing too. So uh, looking to hear what John has to say about that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you, Lewis. And uh, welcome back uh, to VCTV. Uh, last but not least, I've got Gary. Hi, Gary. Welcome back to VCTV. Hello. Today. <laughs> it just felt like yesterday I was on the on the on the on the Zoom call with you. <laughs> yeah, you know it does, doesn't it? Yeah, <laughs> kind it of does. a family thing every day. So my name is Gary Fowler, and I did my first startup at 21. I was a clinical psychologist, and um, uh, with my master's degree, we're thinking about going back to uh, medical school. And I did a startup. So actually, I designed and built and um, used con new and innovative construction tech for about $9 million in houses. So I had no, no experience in it before, but I built houses that had up to 87,000 bricks. And I literally designed them myself. Um, got a lot of press uh, because of the way I did it. Anyhow, from that, that was my first one. I've done 16 companies. I've had two unicorns. Uh, my latest company, Eva, is uh, one of the top leaders in uh, AI tech uh, today. It is a uh, HR tech company, one of the billionaires from Russia who lives in Silicon Valley, David Yang, um, recognized AI expert, <laughs> is my partner in that. Today I start um, and the CEO of GSD, Get Shit Done Venture Studios. And we take companies from Korea, from Dubai, from Russia, all over. And the idea is there's three levels, right? Level one is acceleration, two is regional dominance, but then how do you go global? So I'm in Silicon Valley most of the time, today I'm in Palm Beach, Florida, but most of the time I'm, I'm in Palo Alto. And the idea is to help them go global. We've done it, I've done IPOs in NASDAQ, et cetera. And, and um, so, we look for the most incredible companies in the world that uh, have a billion dollar opportunity. And that's Thank it. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Gary. Welcome back. And as, as, you, as you rightly said, you're global and you cover all the regions in the world. Thank you so much. And we're going to hear more and more insights from you. Okay, great. So we all set with the warm up introduction uh, from all our speakers. So feel free to keep it uh, very much interactive um, so that, you know, 
we have a lot of energy in the in the, in the show and uh, at the end of the show while we're ending please feel free to leave your contact details so that our viewers can reach out to you directly um, and also you know ask each other questions because we are covering different regions like we are covering asia us and you know so yeah let's keep it uh, uh, um, very much um, on a high note okay i'd like to start with john who is dialing in for the very first time from south korea um, john uh, can you help introduce the trends? Because we know South Korea, China, Japan, in Asia, are big players in gaming industry when it comes to gaming, right? So we'd like to know your insights on the trends um, in the region coming from, from South Korea. Yes, um, thank you so much for giving me the chance to speak. <laughs> yeah, South Korea is one of the powerhouses in Asia, size-wise and those development skill-wise. And after pandemic, everything has changed actually. While the pandemic, people locked down in the house and doing three things. First one is playing the game. Second one is watching over the top drama or uh, movies. And third one is fighting each other. So for the gaming, uh, the size, gaming revenue size, and also reaching the, the uh, reaching the the new gamers influence uh, influence in the games industry is getting a rocket high this time. In Korea, 60% of the revenue is, uh, came from mobile games. There are three big players in Korea, Netmarble, Nexon, and NCSoft. We expected total size of the mobile games industry getting larger and larger, also small, and the middle size of the companies get beneficial for that. But in reality, only though the top three end game companies getting more money, but the others are actually not. Because in the games industry, most important part is user acquisition. New users supposed to come to our game so we can operate in the game also expect to make more revenue. But user acquisition requires more money. Big budgeting is only possible for those top three players. The others think like, uh, oh, this is a great chance. We have to do something. This is just chance once in our lifetime but they don't have enough budget to use the acquisition. Right. So that's the kind of trend this time in Korea. So only the number will be come out end of this year or maybe early next year. Uh, the small size and middle size of companies are desperate this time too. So John, you touched upon the user acquisition problems, challenges that you're facing in South Korea. Is it because of the pandemic or has it generally been the case? Actually, generate, uh, it's actually normal. It's, it's a normal. It was happened before too. But this time, it is more serious. Right. Small and middle size of companies have looking for the chances, but they cannot do executive because they don't have enough money. Right. Okay. Got it. Thank you, John. We'll come back to you with more questions. Next, yes. I'd like to move to Sage. Hi, Sage. I would like to just start with your insights uh, about the trends uh, of the industry and the sector. Yeah, I mean, um, John mentioned very, very um, like interesting trend. And um, the fact is, yes, South Korea is important, not just for uh, Asia, but also for the worldwide gaming. I mean, for because South Korean gamers are one of the most, uh, like one of the most highest, highest paying gamers. So the R pool, which is average revenue like per user, uh, so is very high. And um, the, the trends that we currently see, okay, the first one, it was correctly mentioned that uh, the higher acquisition costs. So if we look, for example, let's divide, okay, gaming separately, entertainment separately. So if we look at the gaming, uh, the trends are now that um, user acquisition costs are going higher and higher. So the recent, the recent game that kind of shook, shaken the whole world it was like Genshin Impact which was um, look a way too similar to Breath of the Wild, um, Zelda Breath of the Wild made by Nintendo. But this game, Genshin Impact, which is made in China, uh, already made during two weeks $100 million. But don't let these numbers just, you know, mesmerize you, something like that. Because what we don't know is the amount of money they spent on advertising this game and since the monetization is not very hard there, well, they already got the $100 million, 
uh, so this considered a success. But when younger companies hear that, they think that uh, this is their market that's easy to penetrate, which is right. it isn't. The thing is, I mean, the gaming market is very oversaturated. Uh, the pricing there is very high. So investors are kind of reluctant to pay, let's say, 30, 40 million dollars for you know game development and advertising uh, because you need to advertise it every month spending a couple million dollars and they're very reluctant to pay you know a huge amount of money to right. gamble on just one project right uh, so that's i think the problem with the gaming i mean the market is really oversaturated there are tons of great projects and with every year uh, there are more and more games that compete for the same spot at the, you know, uh, Apple Store, you know, Android stores, you know, Amazon Store, whatever it is. But uh, the spot isn't that big, uh, you know, the place isn't that big for them to compete because the amount of gamers are currently probably not growing that fast because in matured market it's already reached some of the heights. So I think that these are, you know, the trends that we see, for example, in gaming. Right. So I'm going to come back to you with uh, questions around investments because you just brought up a very good point uh, about the Thank challenges. You. Uh, Thank you, uh, Sergey. So before I move to Tony, I just want to start with this uh, little sort of clause. With theaters closing their doors, film sets going on indefinite delays and halls and stadiums and other event centers staying under lock and key, it's, sta it's safe to say that no sector of the entertainment industry uh, has been left unscathed. So having said that, I would like to know how were these challenges? How are these challenges um, uh, that have, uh, you know, the, the entertainment industry in general is facing is gone, is pivoting uh, to, to, uh, to the new normal, to adjust the new normal from Tony. Tony, over to you. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, it's been a whirlwind because uh, the entertainment and film industry, TV industry is very resilient and they're, they can figure out how to fix something like that. So they're always used to whether, you know, a storm comes in and you've got to redo a set or you've got to move quickly and just reinvent stuff. They're used to doing that. Uh, but this was just left, let, left everybody here with nothing to do <laughs> at all. And then you started thinking, okay, well, we are supposed to start shooting in July. I went, I moved to September, but then what are the protocols? What can we do? California has been very stringent since the beginning on protocols, so it's been very, very tough. And then on the on the retail side of things, uh, you know, you have AMC, who I believe just yesterday or last night said, now you can rent out our entire theater for $100, for $99. Wow. So, yeah, so AMC's in, in a lot of trouble. Uh, a lot of, you know, theaters are as well. I, I would tend to say that I think the studio, especially the streamers such as uh, Amazon and, and probably uh, Netflix, at some point may look at buying distribution, uh, snapping up an AMC or things of that nature. I know there were talks early on, probably a year and a half ago, that Amazon may do that. That's a great pipeline. You know, you can go right, make your films, boom. Uh, it's nice and easy. It cuts down uh, middleman costs. Uh, it gets it to market faster. Then you don't have the problem of, oh, are we in the theater, but are we also a streamer? And some, some directors don't want to do both. They want to go theater first and have your 21 days or or 28 days before it comes out uh, uh, in the theater or, or on streaming. So it's a really interesting time. I do have a lot of friends who are now getting back on set um, to minimize set. Uh, the crews are probably 70% of what they were. Uh, protocols are uh, very, very strict. Uh, the one good thing about movie sets and TV sets is that there is a protocol that everybody's always used to anyway. So when you can insert this one more thing in there, it's okay, it's in the chain. Uh, but there is this, if you've ever been to JFK Airport uh, in New York and you wait to take off and there are 35 planes in line, there right. is a backlog of A, films waiting to be released yeah. and then films that are waiting to shoot. So what you're going to have happen is just to get the production started, there were other films that were supposed to start in November that now can start in November, but they were booked a year ago. Now there's a film that was supposed to start in April that now wants to book in November. So how do we do that? Because this film wanted to be there. So that's how about, yeah, it's interesting. So um, I know Eastern Europe's doing quite well, Budapest. I know London, a couple of friends there are now back on set shooting major motion pictures. Uh, so that's it. So, so the pipeline's now coming uh, to production, but you've got this other pipeline at the end that hasn't got out yet. Like, you know, you have Christopher Nolan's movie Tenant that had to go through various incarnations. So 
it, it's, it's much to what Lewis was saying. Uh, I think there's opportunity, there's real opportunity here to figure out the new model. Everybody is, is saying theaters are dead, but they also said that about radio when television came out. So I'm, I'm usually not, when people say something's going to happen quickly, I'm usually the person that kind of dials it back. I mean, it goes back to my journalism days, I, I think. Um, but I, there's, there is really good opportunity here in Hollywood, I think. And there's going to be some, you look at, I mean, look at Disney. Disney's now all in. They announced last week, they're going, they're putting everything into streaming. There, there, there has been massive movements. Netflix has, has jettisoned about five or six of the top line uh, 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 executives. Some see some senior vice presidents. Um, NBC had a huge reshuffle just recently, like two weeks ago. And then, of course, Disney makes the announcement it's going to go all in on streaming. So there is this really cool once in a 20 year thing happening in a sense of trying to figure out how do we distribute in the new medium and how do we make films more, more effectively. So it's, uh, it's, it is kind of like the Wild West. It really is. Right. Excellent. I mean, what I gather is, is more, I think, streaming, live streaming, going digital is the future. Um, if I, if I can say safely. Um, let's hear from Luis and Gary. Um, Luis first. Luis, what's your uh, uh, views, view, viewpoints on that? I'm going to tail on what Tony was saying. Look, I, I've been involved in the entertainment industry for forever. I have a lot of friends in Hollywood. Make, they were making movies all the time. And when everything stopped, you know, you have lives that are impacted. And it's hard ramping back up trying to figure it out. OK, your movie theaters, you know, I mean, if you go way back in history, uh, Tony mentioned about the TV and radio. They said it was dead. It was just a change. You know, you have to change. And when you first had TV, you had a few channels. You had your HBO and you had something called WHT way back when. And they were just they were just boxes. And when cable started, you know, coming coming forward, there was a change. It was it was just a, a morphing of everything. Same thing with radio, with Sirius and XM, when that came out, there was a morphing. Netflix, when it came out, there was a change, you know? So it's, it, everything is changing right now. And you do have the uh, the movie theater chains like AMC, Regal, you have Cinemark, you know, they are hitting a brick wall. They, they have to change their business model. If they do not, they're gonna wind up being like Blockbuster out of business. You have Amazon that is basically, you know, they're, they're, they're constantly moving and evolving. That That's why the, that, the those dynamics allow them to continue to grow and survive during all of it. I mean, they, any, anything that had the pandemic, that company went through the roof. So did Netflix, but you, you know, you're even, even with, with zoom, it went through the roof because people need this. They, they need the tools, you know, whether it be entertainment, whether it be office, whatever it is, you know, things to keep people moving and busy. You know, and I think in, in Hollywood, now that everyone is getting on set, you're going to see a lot of movies in the can. You have Wonder Woman that's that's not going to be coming out, I think, until 2022, you know, and that's already done. You have things in the can done, completed that now they have to figure out the pipeline and how the distribution is going to be because going straight to streaming or going back, you know, they, they have something called going straight to DVD. I don't even know if they name it that anymore, but that's a different animal. And I don't know how they're going to work it out. But, you know, again, Tony said they're resilient. Hollywood will figure it out. You have smart people that are there that will figure it out because it's all about making making things make money. So they know how to do that. Absolutely. A very interesting insights coming from uh, Tony and Luis adding on to the, uh, uh, of uh, regarding the entertainment uh, industry, which is which is great, something new for me. Thank you, thank you so much. <laughs> so, Gary, I like to know your thoughts come uh, from an uh, from an, a technology perspective. How these sectors can be uh, sort of how can well, the people? You know, Tony, I'm I'm a country boy from Pennsylvania. <laughs> Grew up on a side of a mountain, a thousand person village, literally. So let's just keep it simple. So gaming is the ultimate channel for socializing dur during social distancing. It's just the way it is. This is like simple. In fact, it's one of my new articles coming out. So think about it. There's a 39% increase in monthly spend for online gaming, 42% increase in video streams. So, I mean, this is the time. I mean, what else are people doing? This is gonna last another year and a half to two years. People want to connect together. So we've got the opportunity of a lifetime with a captive audience. So think about the possibility for advertising. Think about the possibility for entertainment. Think about 
hyper personalization. How do we make that game closer to that person? Those companies that do that, a lot of it's going to come from the AI. So AR, VR, XR, those are the companies that are going to win. And, you know, I, I think it was Tony or somebody was saying, maybe Lewis, a $200 million, no, John said it, $200 million from China. I mean, this is the way it is because people are bored. They want to interact with one another. And guess what? They've been doing a gaming a long time. Now the new players coming in. So I think this is the opportunity of a lifetime. I think the other thing, I just had a conference with um, a law school and I was asked to speak about uh, AI. And we, one of the topics was AI and education. Well, think about when we take gaming and start to wet it into that because kids get bored, right? This hasn't really been talked about that much, but think about bridging the gap between online gaming and education. How does that help? And so there's new areas we need to explore and new opportunities. And you're right, Lewis, there are 400 million uh, daily active uh, users of Zoom today, 400. And uh, I remember five years ago, six, when I was one of the first Zoom um, users, and I had gotten it from Tony, uh, from uh, Eric's um, investor. And he said, oh, you got to try this out at Mergent. I said, okay. I would send a link out and my friend said, I don't want another, another Skype to connect to. I don't need another Google Hangouts. Why are you sending this over to my set? Because this thing is real good. I mean, real good. And it's free at the time. And look at it now. So he's worth $19 billion today, by the way. I wrote him like three weeks ago. I was jacking around with him on. Uh, but I mean, think about $19.1 billion. So this is the time. Our lives have fundamentally changed. This digital transformation is upon us. Everything around education, everything around gaming. Uh, you know, if we look at the studios, you're right. I mean, how in the world is somebody going to want to go to into a uh, movie theater today and uh, sit in there with the possibility of the COVID threat? It's like Russian roulette. I, in this situation, it's not the smart thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> well, no. I mean, if I can tap in real quick to what Gary was saying. Um, absolutely. And you think about it. One thing that's great about theaters uh, is the stadium seating. Now, the bad thing about it is stadium seating because people breathe out and down, right? Out and down, out and down, right? So you, you have that, you know, thing just, just on a, just a, you know, on the frontline level. Also, one thing uh, Gary was saying about people want to get together. I had a meeting here in Los Angeles probably right before COVID, like beginning of February uh, with the, uh, my company, the, the content artists uh, was raising money at the time and we were just launching and we, we were talking about interconnectivity, how people will view things, how will, will you reach them? And, th and these guys had a company, uh, a Russian Silicon Valley company. And Gary May, uh, if people want to know about it later, I'll let them know, but they, they're they basing all their AI and their connectivity on people are lonely. That people are, they, they're finding out increasingly more around the world that people, they've done deep research, that people are lonely now. And so they're developing this, this, this company to kind of, uh, that's going to be, they believe in the next three to five, to, 10 years, the big social impact that, that, that will come out that people are, they're, they're siloed and they're lonely and they're, they need to connect them. So Gary's right on point. People really do want to be connected. And also if you're stuck with your family for three months, you do want to see somebody else. <laughs> so. <laughs> well, absolutely. And, and if I could just tap on top of that, that, that deal, you know, uh, artificial intelligence, you know, Gary and I were in that world and Gary more so than me. Um, artificial intelligence is going to is going to impact is impacting every industry across the board. Hollywood is no exception. Tony made a good point. You know, people are lonely. So you're going to have, you know, artificial intelligence. You have machine learning because it's learning. It's learning what what a person likes, doesn't like. And if, when they get emotions involved and Gary spoke about this so many times and and we spoke about it, the the emotion part of it once they start getting a handle on that it's going to be very interesting and that machine learning and, and, and ai and gaming too is important because you have marketing and advertising that's involved in that product placement things like that i just want to throw that in an education too. forget about it there, there are a lot of things that are going to happen there as well i mean the one thing that you can do with the games with these online games and this is something that i'm starting to see now i am the ceo of one of the uh the top AI security uh, facial recognition companies. But what we're seeing now is imagine this. So gamers on one side, you got a camera, 
the system, the AI understands what their movements are like and starts adjusting the game to the movements of that person, you know, how they're feeling, uh, you know, and adjusting it and moving around and starts to understand not only what kind of games, what kind of players they should be playing, you know, how do the, how, how much do they want to push that kind of thing. So help them learn better, help them be more engaged in that game. And that's interesting, Gary, because, you know, we do this now. We're trying to predict the emotions like with students in school and we haven't rolled it out yet where pre they predict when they're in a good mood, bad mood and, and it a bad mood. And it helps you to interject before something bad happens. So these are things that, that we're rolling out for schools and uh, to try to help with, with even a further problem with kids. You know, when they start going back to school, feeling distant from the world and feeling lost. I mean, that, that my company, Eva, that I co-founded four years ago. So we actually took the technology. We pivoted three times. We took it and we did uh, HR management. So what we're doing is we understand the sentiments, how somebody feels. I can forecast one year in advance how, whether or not somebody's going to be leaving a company before they even think about it. Wow. Before they even think about it, our business at the beginning of the pandemic was up 38 times and the company is closing on a billion dollar, um, you know, valuation today. It's huge. And think about it. Think about all the HR around the world. We got all these remote employees. How in the world you, can you manage them? And before, if you're, you're sitting in Los Angeles or Silicon Valley and you've got employees in Seoul, you've got employees in Moscow, how do, would you ever understand what's happened as a CEO? You can't do every six months, you do a, uh, a performance review, but that really is what's going from the past, not yeah. what's happening right now. So what we did is we trained our AI on millions. We have large, large training sets. So uh, at the beginning of the pandemic, our business was up 38 times. We've, you know, we're, I, I shouldn't say everything that's happened with my company, but let's just say that <laughs> it's closing on a billion dollar company now. <laughs> oh, great. I mean, Gary, I mean, this is something you should be sharing with us. I mean, you can capture the sentiments of employees. A CEO can capture a year in advance. You can, you can, uh, you can tell what's happening with that employee, how they're feeling, how they're relating to their other employees, how their department's doing compared to everybody else, how they're feeling, how they're interacting. And then it can actually coach that employee. The AI can coach you and say, listen, uh, you might want to do this a little bit differently, tone it down. Here's some suggestion. And then it gives you like uh, trophy cups saying, great job. You know, it, it reinforces you. And this is, it's really, really taken off. I mean, it's one of the hottest companies. I, you know, I formed it three years ago from nothing, four years ago from nothing with David. And, and who would have known? You know what I mean? Absolutely. Uh, so that's where the future is because, and now we've got a year and a half for two more years of this. And what the amazing thing about it, it should have happened a long time ago is because the technology was in place for us to be able to do things uh, through the digital yeah. transformation. Great, Gary. I'm loving AI as a technology already. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing those insights with us. A little bit insider info about your company. It's okay. <laughs> uh, Tony, you wanted to add something there? You wanted to say something? Well, a, a couple of things. Um, Lewis, I'll, I'll give Lewis props. He's got a Black Sabbath shirt on and Ben Roethlisberger behind him, uh, which is Pittsburgh's having a great, great season. So uh, I'll listen to anything Lewis says. Uh, to what Gary was saying too, um, two things. I'd like to ask Gary a question. So how tough has it been? Uh, and I know we don't have to go too deep into this, but I'm working with a company that does, works with Google TensorFlow and other things. And there, there are a lot of, you know, legal hurdles they had to get over. If, how much are you tapping into the employees? How are you tapping into them? And what are the legal boundaries you have to worry about? I mean, the thing is what we're doing is we're using an email, which whenever you sign up for a corporation, it's a corporation's email, right? So okay. we're using everything that's their corporate repositories. We're not tapping into any type of personal accounts. It's everything associated with the corporation. So it's fully compliant. And we had to take, you know, those things into consideration, but uh, you know, we can, we can look at any kind of repository that's a corporation uses. So Slack, uh, Salesforce, whatever, any kind of the data sources, 
uh, that's out there. But the good news is this is going to happen because we are in a credible state of, uh, and I've said this before, infobesity. I mean, think about every one of us here. We've got how many email addresses? Five, seven, ten. And then you've got all these repositories, Google Drive, Dropbox, Box, Slack, Telegram, WeChat. How in the world can you even manage your own personal cloud? Today, the average person has 300,000 items in their personal cloud. The entire web in 96 with 257,000. It's doubling every year. In five years, we'll have 10 million items with the Internet of Things. How are you going to be able to tell what you have? It's impossible. Great, uh, Tony. I think Sergey had a question or he wanted to add something to what Tony just said. Uh, Sergey, please yeah. go on. Yeah, there was like a very intense conversation between uh, John and <laughs> Tony. <laughs> so um, I didn't want to interrupt first. Uh, so yeah, I think uh, what we've touched already is like very two important things. First one I'd like to is that people become lonely. And the thing is that what we will see probably in this year and uh, what will be probably, um, you know, emphasized in the media a bit later that a lot of people broke down, like break down their relationship during this year. They were, you know, insane amount of, you know, divorces in China just when the COVID, you know, stopped. So, and Europe goes into the second wave. So, what I mean here is there are a huge opportunity for entertainment to jump in. And I think there will be like two major uh, ways. One of them is like introducing robots, robot AI things, you know, advanced Alexa, all this stuff. And uh, the second thing is probably because it, the first way is to mm, help people communicate with some sort of AI, which is not a subset, full, fully substitution for, you know, human interaction. And probably I, will, I expect, you know, a huge wave of second type of startups that will try to make, you know, this digital wave of interhuman relationships online. Because, yeah, I think if people currently quite suffer because of, you know, um, yeah, they like spend this uh, summer actively, you know, communicating and all this stuff. But currently, you know, for example, Europe go into the second wave of pandemic, all these uh, things happening. So I think people, I kind of, you know, need some sort of clever entertainment to help them communicate with other people. Not just uh, Tony mentioned that these uh, theaters, right? They, there's not enough movies. For example, there are not enough movies in the pipeline. So sometimes, you know, the theaters had to close even if the regulations allow them to stay open because they had nothing to show. Some yeah. theaters even, you know, invented things. For example, I heard from my friends in Moscow that they've showed a Blade Runner movie uh, dated uh, 1982, right? So it's like uh, almost 30 years old movie, which is gr great movie actually. But they showed it on the, on the theaters and it was like a, great hit uh, and uh, it's almost uh, was a one week top grossing movie despite the fact the fact that it's 28 years old so i mean yeah but uh, the the thing is the world won't go this to the same place where the theater has just opened we will have all these new premieres and people will go there because it we already understand that it takes a longer time for world to you know deal with these problems so the thing is, how will entertainment help these people that are at their homes to kind of experience uh, the, you know, the movies, the entertainment with other people being a bit, you know, communicating with them? Yeah, uh, I just wanted to add a little bit uh, to both of Tony, what uh, Luis and everybody added, like in mental health was a big uh, factor. Uh, like mental illness, especially due, due to loneliness, you know, suddenly cut off from rest of the world. I'm talking about uh, Hollywood, I just wanted to say something about Bollywood, which is the movie industry from India. <laughs> one of the one of the famous actor, he committed suicide. Uh, uh, he was just early 30s and he committed suicide. It came like, uh, it was a news like four months back when he it was like, we literally, um, we started the lockdown in India and obviously something happened and he committed suicide. So the point is, uh, I think startups who are looking uh, for mental, solving mental health as well in terms of entertainment, as, as rightly said, one-on-one -on -one communication, because we, we are craving for 
interaction because we are social beings as human beings, right? So that's the reason I love to talk to everybody <laughs> and meet everybody every day. So because people ask me, how can you do this every day? Because yeah, I miss that human interaction. And it's very important for me to be um, in touch with human beings, even though it's the digital medium. That's a good question. I mean, that's a good point because uh, on the loneliness scale, and maybe John can chime in on this as well from South Korea, but you know, you, there's also the Bollywood thing is yes, lockdown, but also the pressure. There's a lot of, there's a lot of pressure. There's scandal in Bollywood right now with, uh, with drugs uh, on set and some stars got embroiled in that. And then you flip it over to K-pop and some of the game. So you have K-pop, you had some suicides there, right? right. And you also had uh, in gaming, you have, uh, I think one kid committed suicide a while ago. There was a, there was a bit of scandal about that. So, I mean, John, what do you see, you know, in, in South Korea with the mental health of what's happened? You have the K-pop stars who have committed suicide. You've got, you know, in gaming, you had a little bit of scandal with skins and also mm -hmm. uh, the pressure and what have you. So what do you see down there, John? Yes, um, people are depression during the pandemic, but this time everything seems like a back to normal. Yeah, yeah, all the people applaud us like uh, we did a really good job for the, the virus controlling. But in mm -hmm. fact, we have 50 or 100 new confirmed patients every day. So it will take a little more time, a little bit more time for government, um, what can I say, just, just suggest us to go out and work out. Uh, so people try to go to the, the mall or the gym. They try to do that this time. However, um, I feel like uh, people, I don't know, the suicide, <laughs> I couldn't see the kind of news is a lot this, this time, um, but we still need a little bit more time. I came, I went to a movie two weeks ago. It's supposed to be 600 stitches in the cinema, but only five people watched the movie together. We need more time. We really need more time. Absolutely. But this can be yeah, a little bit out of the focus, but interesting investment activation happening two weeks ago. There is company Neighbor Z, which is a subsidiary company of the Neighbor. Neighbor is one of the biggest IT company providing the, the searching system in Korea. And um, the Neighbor Z, uh, the formal name is Snow, uh, just uh, uh, they pro started providing the application which is providing the people like a virtual reality world inside of the application. And Big Hit Entertainment, which is the BTS, is, they, have, they have a BTS. The interesting thing is BTS is Korean. And the military service in Korea is kind of a mandatory. So yeah. BTS members should service for the country in a few years. That means they cannot do concert every day. So Big Hit Entertainment, the highlight is the Neighbor Z, which is providing application named Geppetto. What they are doing is the user, whenever user doing selfie inside of the Geppetto, AI made their um, own, the unique the avatar inside of the world. So people the controlling the avatar to communicate with other people or watching the concert and something like that. So Big Hit Entertainment and YG made the investment in Geppetto, 12 million US dollars only a week ago. So uh, BTS will doing, keep doing their concert activities in the Geppetto. Huh. So yeah, it's kind of risk-free whenever they go to the military service, but they can keep doing the concert. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, we just have 15 more minutes into the show. I just want to know, open the floor uh, to the speakers to ask questions to the co-speakers. Please feel free. Any questions? For well, uh, uh, let me ask, let me, I'll ask questions because I'm, yeah. I'm the guy that just, just talks, right? Uh, you know, uh, Sergey has some good input on on how the movie theaters are working and i'm curious to, to get further input from tony as far as the entertainment industry and what the next phase is going to be because with movies on you know not being made and now you have things that are in the can still it's like a weird situation and i can't get straight input from my friends because they don't even they, they don't know because everything's up in the air and i'm just curious on the input and how how disney and netflix flix and amazon how they fall into this and what the next phase is going to be. Well, it, it's interesting because um, 2009, 2010, um, I do a little bit of real estate. So I, was, I bought some uh, foreclosures in what became uh, Silicon Beach and, and it became Playa Vista. 
And back then there was this panic with the Jeff Zuckers and Les Moonvezes and the guys who were running all the networks here of holy crap, what do we do with all this digital, right? And I was blessed enough once I bought one of the foreclosures and moved into it that I, at night I spent my nights with you know all the up and coming you know tech people at these beer and pizza meetups and forming all these. So I was at a, a, a foot in both way, in both sides. And there was this much talk like that. I talked about radio and TV earlier of, oh, you know, the networks are done. They're going to be gone. They don't know what they're doing and what have you. And they work through it. And my thing has always been that they're creative, very creative and, and storytellers. And they'll find a way to figure out what's going to happen. I think what, is, what has happened in the pandemic, it has allowed the, the Disneys and the Igers and all those people and Paramount and Warner Brothers and everybody to try to figure out, okay, what are we what are we doing wrong? And I, I think this shed a spotlight on a lot of fat in the industry where they now, just like we, you know, we had fat in our lives. I don't know about you, but I've got friends I've talked to on Zoom where they've said one of the biggest things they've learned during this pandemic is there are about, you know, 20 people they'll never talk to again. They're not going to waste their time with people anymore. They're going to focus on the core human beings that, you know, bring value and they can bring value to them and they should spend more time with them. I think in, it's the same thing. When you have executives sitting home a long time, and they can't go in the office, they start thinking things, you know, and looking at things. So my friends at Disney, well, some of them have lost their jobs and some of them lost coming over from Fox. Um, they think it's going in the right direction and it is the pipeline and it's going to force maybe a, another pipeline. I and mean, if you look, you know, I saw Tubi the other day is now really starting to ad advertise, in, you know, Pluto now is doing advertisements all over the place. And that's, you know, uh, uh, that's uh, what's McCall's uh, company. Well, he's, he's gone now. So I, you know, it's it's interesting. It's it it is like, it is like big jumbo jets waiting to take off. They're just piled up, and what are you going to do? And you have to wait for the other ones to come in. So, uh, and then you have the streaming problem. I mean, we have a we we create shows, so we have a show at Netflix right now, because Netflix's main problem it's having is people get lost in thumbnails. It's it's freaking thumbnail hell. So we we pitched a show to Netflix to take care of all of that for them uh, as well, because you are gonna have just a blitzkrieg of just a, you know, a hurricane coming by you of, of media opportunities, you know, and much to Gary's point earlier, you know, there's just a, we have a, a, a I don't wanna swear, we have a boatload, I was gonna say S-ton, of, of other stuff in our life that's swirling about and how do we get into entertainment and how do we gamify something to make it entertainment. But I can tell you the thing, and I'll wrap it up real quick, is the one thing that has happened since people have been able to write stories on cave walls is that, and this will go with AI as well, yeah. storytelling. Right. Storytelling will always win out. And storytelling in Hollywood and entertainment, you'll be able to find the keywords and phrases and do you, do you pounce on fear? Do you pounce on the ego of somebody to use keywords? And do they like that in the story? So storytelling will always, always win out, um, even though it goes like this at times. But I, Gary's right. It is, it is the Wild West with gold rush opportunities. And, and it's just, I haven't seen it like this in a long, long time. So it's, it's very exciting in one sense. Scary, but exciting. Yeah, I like that. Scary, but exciting and the Wild West. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you, Tony, for that. Um, so I just well, um, like to take some closing remarks because we have come to the end of the show. I'd like to start with Sergey. Uh, Sergey, what's the closing remarks for the show tonight? Okay, so uh, for the closing remark, I think, um, as you know, uh, Tony, Gary, John, Lewis all rightly mentioned that I you know that we are currently in this situation when uh, there are a lot of opportunities there. So my remark would be, do not rush over, you know, um, traditional ways of uh, startup building, you know, in terms of gaming, do not go for just, you know, making another game. Uh, if you're thinking about entertainment, uh, don't think about, you know, making another streaming platform. Who needs that? I mean, that, there is enough, there is already too many streaming platforms and every telecom giant, every, you know, mobile provider company does that. And uh, they will mostly will fail and, you know, so don't do that. Think of the opportunities that we've just mentioned, right? You know, the mental health, you know, the what you can do probably for the, for the entertainment industry, right? Maybe you can be like an enabler them so uh, in this case this is way more 
um, productive and way more cost effective than just thinking of uh, copycatting, you know, like I said, streaming services or another game. They won't make you money uh, as a startup. Just think of uh, different opportunities. Think creatively in this case. Yeah, as an investor, so that's your feedback to the startups and founders. Be creative, yeah, because the, the streaming service space is already too crowded, yeah? Yeah. Uh, thank you, Sergey. What's your uh, feedback about VCTV? Well, uh, I think uh, what I like today very much, I mean, I've seen, you know, people, we, we're chatting. It was not like uh, one speaking after another. I mean, I think we all miss that in, you know, what we have in online, in like live panels, because when we discuss and people feel that energy, when we just address someone, you know, not interrupting, but, you know, in a friendly way, because otherwise it just, you know, you feel this disconnection, like it's like already, pre, you know, you know, it's already pre-recorded and you just put in one guy after another, then we just uh, feel a bit robotic. So I really like when it just, you know, makes a conversation. Um, yeah, I know I know it's a not an Asian mentality to interrupt in this case. So I understand why John probably like didn't want to, didn't want to jump in. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I think it, it's a good way. So it may be a bit encouraged to, you know, to have these conversations between us. That way, I think uh, the viewers will be much more entertained in this case. <laughs> I just want to, I just want to fix Sergey's yeah. clock. Can you fix that clock behind him? It's driving me crazy. It's not going. I stopped it because, you know, if it's like, uh, if it will be like swinging around, then you will be looking all the time at, into that, not at me speaking. Well done. Well done. Right. <laughs> getting, well, sleepy, getting sleepy. Getting yeah. <laughs> sleepy. Oh, yeah, it will be like, you know, hypnosis. Hypnosis. Yeah. <laughs> All right, great. On that note, I think John is okay to be surrounded with a bunch of Americans and uh, European, and he is no, no, okay to interrupt. <laughs> oh, no, not a problem. Actually, uh, I studied in America, and I also worked in Very Berlin good. for a while when I was working in the games industry. So um, the talking with you and sharing the idea with you is kind of familiar with me. But recently, I haven't chance to speak English that much, so... I'm sorry for my English today. It was broken. Yeah, I, I admit that broken. We but it'll be better next fun. time. Don't worry. <laughs> we understand you. We all, all of us in the panel, really understood very clearly what you're trying to say. So thank you so much, uh, and we would like to have you more on our panels as well. So what's your closing remarks for the evening, uh, John? Okay. Um, as an investor, um, I have actually I was working in the games industry and still have a bunch of friends who are still working in the games industry. But as an investor, I always looking for the key to the chance to make a return on investment to keep my job. Mm -hmm. um, meanwhile, someone will be hurted, someone will be fired, or someone will get the right chances. And we have to see the bright, bright side of this time. And I think that's the right path that we have to go. It's kind of a homework, how to make an investment to stream in Korea. However, I'm, I will do my best to the Korean, the gamers go to the right way. So that's the, my, the close marks. <laughs> uh, great, great, great uh, thoughts, uh, John. Uh, and what's your feedback about VCTV? Because you're um, talking, mm -hmm. speaking for the first time. I just want to know your feedback. Yeah, I was so thrilled. And I watched some of the episode happening before. But wow. you guys are so professional and everyone came from far west to far east. And this will be a great show. And thank you so much for inviting me today. And you will be also happy to invite me again. I will be a better person to giving you the, the better inspiration. And let's solve the problem together. Absolutely. So lovely. Thank you so much for sharing, um, mentioning those closing words. I mean, I really like it. I mean, I appreciate it. Thank you so much, John. And uh, next, I'd like to ask uh, um, uh, Tony about uh, his closing remarks and the feedback about VCTV because this is, this is the Asia episode. So you have to separate it from the US episode. <laughs> <laughs> Division of church and state, apparently. Uh, well, I kind of already gave my, my closing, um, you know, there's a lot of opportunity uh, and don't jump in and don't go crazy. Uh, it, you know, it, the path is coming. Everything happens, you know, in a way that that is maybe one to three years down the road. Um, but, uh, but you know, Hollywood's not going away. 
uh, content's not going away. Uh, and th those who are very creative uh, are the ones, you know, and, and I think Gary's heard this before, but one of the things that we do at the content artists very well is and help build media companies bring them value uh, so they can be sold uh, is, you know, that we showcase opportunity to grab attention. That's what we've done for millions of people every single day. That's how we grab their eyeballs and we all are in the attention game, but how do you get there? And many people, many people do not know how to showcase the opportunity. And there is a huge opportunity now, especially in storytelling and, and the ability to come in and, and invest. I've, I just got something a few minutes ago about a film that somebody wants you know, some money for. But so it's, it's starting to really heat up. As far uh, as DCTV, I like it a lot. I'd like this format a bit better when I host panels myself, either in person or around the world. I do like what you did, Sonny, is bringing everybody in and let's jump in because people do have opinions. And you know, the panel here, uh, myself, is really at a high level. And right. so it's great for me to have somebody jump in on me or be able to do that. It, it is like we're just hanging out, you know, in a, in a round table and just chatting. And that's that's the good thing. I like that a lot. So I like that you put that up there right off the bat, Sonny. That was great. And you're Thank great. You. Too, so. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Tony. Thank you for your uh, kind words. Uh, and I really, really appreciate it. And I really look forward to have you back on another panel. <laughs> Cheers. All right. Uh, next, I'd like to move to Lewis. Lewis, uh, your closing remarks and... Oh, Tony got you blushing already. I don't know. Tony's smooth. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, look, you know, in, in, in Hollywood, uh, it's the gold rush right now. If anyone knows history with the gold rush, people were going to the West. Go West, young man. Go make your life. But who made the money? You know how many, how many millionaires came out of the gold rush from, from, from mining for gold? Zero. You know who made the money? People selling the picks and the axes and Levi's and all these companies. So think about that when you're you're looking at, at entertainment. Look, think about that when you're looking at gaming. Be the the infrastructure, the architecture, because you'll be the, the, that platform will always be there for people to build on and grow. And that's why I think the money's going to be across the board. And and I welcome everyone to uh, anyone on the panel or beyond to connect with me. You know, on LinkedIn, you see me on Twitter. I, I chat a lot, and uh, you know, I'm always willing to give my input uh, uh, to people. And Minnie says, "Tada!" <laughs> wow. Thank you, thank you, Louis. Thank you. Uh, last but not least, Gary, your uh, 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 closing remarks and feedback. Okay. Super, you. yeah. So, I mean, this is a great. This is a transformational time in humanity. I mean, it's like the beginning of the 20th century. Uh, when we discovered uh, electricity and look at the changes that took place over the next 30 years. So it's a very interesting transformational time. And it's also, if you think differently and keep a positive attitude, it's a great chance for the startups to uh, move forward very, very quickly. And it's a great time to invest in some of the coolest technologies from around the world. It truly is a democratization of opportunities. Uh, people can reach me on my LinkedIn, Gary Fowler, LinkedIn. Our Gary at gsdvs.com. I'd love to hear from them. And uh, we curate the best AI companies in the world. And their goal is to create another unicorn. So we, we like to consider ourselves unicorn breeders. Great. Thank you so much, Gary. And uh, so what's your take about VCTV? I mean, just, I know oh, that- I love, I, I love coming to see you. I got to tell you, <laughs> you break <laughs> my day. It's like a day with a lot of sunshine. So I just love it. I think it's a great way to get information out to the world and to keep people connected. So they don't feel lonely and they understand that, you know, this is different than the 1918 pandemic. We do have a chance to be able to communicate and to be able to tie ourselves together. So it does give us a bond. And I think you're doing a great job with it. Thank you. Thank you for your kind words, Gary. Same goes to uh, uh, you all. I mean, VCTV is VCTV. I keep on telling it's because of you guys, like, you know, um, because of you, Gary, because of you, Lewis, for your dedication, for your commitment, for your time. I really appreciate that. Um, Tony, and being remembered is a good thing, too. You know, I'm, I'm no Gary, but it's, it's always, it feels good. <laughs> all right, cool. <laughs> Anything you want to come comment on that, Gary? <laughs> I feel like Roger D Dangerfield here. <laughs> what are we talking about? <laughs> yeah, but you get respect, right? So that's a good I thing. Get no respect. <laughs> <laughs> right.
Thank you, guys. <laughs> that, that's all. That's about VCTV. We keep it fun. We keep it engaging. We keep it informative. We keep it uh, knowledgeable as well. Lot to learn today from all of you. Um, so, uh, founders and startups who wish to reach out to these fabulous minds, these great minds, you can always do that directly on their LinkedIn. Or you can go to our website, www.lawtoken.com stroke events, and you can all find them featured over there. So excellent. This brings us to the end of the session right on time. This is what I love. Uh, and thank you so much again. I really appreciate your time and insights today. And I hope to see you all again on another topic and another panel another day. Till then, stay safe and stay connected and have a great evening. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.